Excel 2021 Illustrated, Module 8, Analyzing Data with Pivot Tables. Pivot tables will be very new to you, but it is a high demand skill in the business world. If you can learn to do these efficiently, <laughs> your future bosses will thank you. Or maybe your current boss if you're watching it already. So section one is uh, um, information again. So what is a pivot table? You know that a chart is a way to display a spreadsheet visually or pictorially. Well, a pivot table is the same idea, except it's still numbers. It's not a graph of any kind. It's still numbers, but they're more organized. So that's really convenient. If you look in the book, you'll see examples of pre and post, much easier to read. A couple of things are required, and I'm bothering to say all this because I know very well that just like me, <laughs> you're going to skip this whole page unless I force you into it, so I am. So in order to use, to make a pivot table, you have to have your data in your spreadsheet set up a certain way. It has to have column headings, and each column has to have the same type of data. So it's names or it's currency or it's dates, that, that same information in that whole column. You can't have any blanks and you have to have at least one repeated data uh, to facilitate grouping. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. This is a spreadsheet we're going to use. Do you see how there's a, a position ID of 240 and 240 is finance and accounting. This is an account, you, you accounting people will love this. And then you have the technical division, they're all called 110. And we have which quarter, one, two, three, four, and how much revenue they made. As you go down, you'll see that you move from the Boston office, column C, from the Boston office to the New York office, to the Philadelphia office. So. We have three offices, each of which has uh, several different occupations in it and four quarters of the occupations for each. So it's a very complex spreadsheet. Then our repeated data occurred in several locations. The more repeated data types you have, the more kinds of pivot tables you can make. Anyway, then the next step is to determine your purpose. So you got all that stuff. What are you going to do with it? What do you want to make it into? What numbers do you want to get from it? That will be given by your boss probably. And once you determine your purpose, then you can identify which fields you'll need to put in there and what kinds of, of statistics you need to do for it and then how you want to arrange it, and that's the pivot. And you probably know the term pivot, but what does pivot mean anyway? And this graphic helps. If you think of a compass, we have the arms that turn around on a central point. So pivot doesn't exactly mean turn around, but it does mean like twist. And what we're doing is twisting the data from its numerical format into something else. And then they want to warn you, please put it on a different worksheet. So you don't mess yourself up. So that was um, the first two pages. Now let's go ahead and let's make a pivot table report. Let's see how that works. They had us open this file and save it off with a different name, which I actually didn't do yet, but I think it won't matter, at least not right now. And what we want to do is up on the Insert tab, there's a tables group and there are several options. There are some recommended tables. It's just like a wizard that we've used before or just like when you're inserting a chart, it gives you some help, some to choose from. Or if you wanted to, you could create your own from scratch, which you won't do this week, right? But eventually you might do that. We're going to look at the recommended tables and it gave us pictures of several different kinds it thinks we might want. And you can see how the data has been summarized in there in various ways. The last option at the bottom is a blank. We're going to do a blank, just so we have practice doing such a thing. We'll click a blank table. It automatically put me on a new worksheet, which is convenient. 
And then it opened on the right hand side a pivot table fields pane, a window pane, pane, P A N E, to help us figure out how we want to set it up. The trick here is to figure out what you want to put in which place. I don't expect you to get this all figured out right now, but this is a start and an exposure. And the more you practice, just like hula hoop, right? The more you practice, the better you'll get. They're going to give us hints as to what to put in here. Let's check the office box first because we want to know which different offices we're including. And as you see, it's uh, Boston and New York and Philadelphia. Okay, so it started there. Let me crank up the zoom on that so we can see something while we're making this. Now, let's see how that does. Now we're down on step five, and it says to uh, put the position ID in there. So it assumed for us that we would like to have a row with the office in it, and then we would like to summarize by position ID. Well, the position ID isn't a thing to be added up like revenue. It's just a number that identifies a job. So we don't really need that. On the other hand, we decided that we'd like to have columns across the top. And so I clicked and dragged it up into the columns. And what it did now is remember each of those is one kind of office in the company. So it made position offices across the top and automatically assumed in there to add a grand total. And what else do we need in here? Well, um, for each, each location, for each office, we want to, to, to get quarterly statistics. And step seven says, let's take the quarter field and let's, we're going to drag it down so that we won't get information in the wrong place. Ask me, I tried it. We'll just drag it down. And now it put the quarters below the cities. Okay. And then we want to click on the revenue field because what we want to know in here is what the revenue was for each of those. So we'll just click it. And it put the numbers in for us. I'll go just one notch down on the zoom so you can see it all together. So we have now by city the total revenue for each of the job offices as well as the information by quarter and the total for each quarter and grand totals. These are the subtotals. These down here are the grand totals at the bottom. And we can collapse and expand these as needed. So we can have as much or as little detail as we want. Pretty tricky, eh? Okay, just while we're here. Yeah, and can you do this by yourself yet? No, it's okay. That's it's the first page of the chapter. We'll kind of get there. There are some other ways you could present it as well. If you go up to the design tab. Oh, here's the design tab. Since we're in pivot tables, we got these two extra tabs at the end. On the design tab in layouts, in layouts, we can choose different report layouts. And what we're in now is compact. Squeeze it in as much as you can, but everything is there. Let's look at the outline format just to compare. It's just, it's just spaced out a little bit more. Let me decrease the zoom a little bit. I can, okay. And let's look at the tabular form. Just to compare, okay, well, ta tabular means table, but that's fine. And it put the subtotals underneath instead of at the top. You'll notice that. And one thing that's interesting is in each subtotal, 
you we would be used to seeing a formula up there up there on the formula bar but we don't although the the tool tip if you hover over that um, particular c9 cell it says the sum of the revenue and here's the value and here's its position and so on so it does have the information but it doesn't show up on the formula bar well, th that's just interesting and we'll switch it back to the compact version and that's all there is for this particular lesson.